Okay, but for real, though. <laughs> wow! That sucked. All right. Okay, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Hopefully nothing breaks this time. That was that was terrible. I did not enjoy that. Mm. Ow, you saw that. That's fine. You know nothing. All right. So, your uh <laughs> your favorite um disorganized streamer has returned. Welcome back, Spike. Hey, thanks. I'm glad to be here. Um, we had a little bit of a, a mishap, a little miscue. I got very excited about a couple of things and forgot to do some basic things. I didn't nurture the goose and was too excited about the egg. Long story, I'm taking a leadership course. Um, so, here I am, doing my best to nurture the goose. What have I been up to? Oh, uh, I made these. These are pretty cool. They're earrings, uh, and they are made from... Uh, they are 3D printed, and they are these flexible little guys, little lizards that are flexible, and I made these, and I'm very proud of myself for having made these. I've never made earrings before. Who knew? So there they are. I made those. Uh, feel free to uh, check out my uh, Etsy here after the stream. I will be posting those. Uh, if you like that sort of thing, I will have them here. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff that I keep meaning to do uh, before stream. And quality of life stuff. I did. Imp I did add one thing. Hopefully, it works. Um, and that's this. I don't know how. Uh, well, I can't. Can I do it? I think I have a cooldown on it now that I think about it. So now I can't do it. I have a new point redemption. Uh, it's read that turtle book. And actually, if case you were wondering what that means, that's this turtle book. This turtle book right here is uh, the turtle book in question. It is the one, the only novelization of the live-action film Lean Green and on the screen. I read the bejesus out of this book multiple times. Uh, and I have, in fact, already read a couple of passages out of it. Uh, I'm up to page two. Um, and if you'd like to see what we did at page two, we found our pal Raphael coming out of the sewer to stop the Foot Clan and assist his friend April O'Neil. Well, she's not friends yet, but she will be soon. Uh, spoiler alert for anybody who needs a spoiler on a movie this old. I don't even have a year on this. Maybe I do. Uh, 1990 is what the book says. Hey, dudes, this is no cartoon. <laughs> you can see that right there. Hey, dudes no cartoon um so i do have a, a point redemption for that uh, i will pause what i'm doing and we will uh read from the teenage mutant ninja turtles uh novelization of the uh 90s film uh and there are 16 photos from the motion picture to be seen to be had to be enjoyed uh from this book so more power to us for being able to enjoy that on stream i'm not sure what happened when obs crashed it is true that i have not restarted my computer in a little while so that could be it um but you know we'll, we'll see uh where did we leave off i think i showed the pokeball uh that we printed obviously the the middle of the pokeball is not um formed yet uh, but that's okay. We are working on that. And then once it's all assembled, uh, we will have inside of that Pokeball a uh, Switch game cartridge holder. Uh, and that will be pretty neat. I might even print a stand for it. So that is that is another item that may find its way uh, up to uh, my shop. Uh, at the very least, we'll be showing it on Discord. Uh, oh, I did not mention anybody... Uh, that I am live. So I guess I'll do that too. We'll tell all the people of Discord uh, that I have gone live. Yay for me. Um, and then we'll get started. So let's see here. Anything interesting happen? 
uh, to me. No. Well, no. Yes, actually, something interesting did happen. I have a beta fish. Uh, now, some of you know that I have lots of fish. I've got, I got, a, I got a bunch of fish. I got a 55 gallon tank, a 30 gallon tank, and a 10 gallon tank, and all full of fish. Um, but in particular, this beta. Okay, now if you guys know anything about beta fish, uh, betas are, um, you know, usually kept in tiny little bowls, uh, and you know, that's supposedly the life they like to live. And anyway, it's not too far off. Okay, I'll give them that. They do tend to live in slow-moving, stagnant water with not a lot of places to, to move around. That's kind of their deal. But it turns out, yeah, they can live happily in a community tank. And we have uh, Finn Rider uh, living in my community tank now. And so, that's a thing. That's a real thing. We have a beta just hanging out with a bunch of other fish. And he's claimed a little area as his own. And he loves it, and that's great. I'm excited. Happy for him, in fact. Mm. So that is that is something new that has come up. Um, I am I am actually dying a little bit in this uh, hoodie, so I'll be taking that off. Uh, please um, give me a moment to do that while I get a little bit relaxed here. All right. Now, we're going to be playing... Roger Wilco in the Sarian Encounter. And it is the, the remake of the first Space Quest game. Uh, that is... Uh, it's this one here, 1991. The game obviously came out much sooner than that, since it was, you know, the original. Um, and what can I tell you about this type of game? Well, first of all, it's a point-and-click adventure. So if you're not familiar with that... Um, it's basically characterized by puzzle solving, exploration. Uh, there's a solid narrative. Um, so it's kind of like you're being told a story or sort of being part of a story. Uh, and not a lot of action, not a lot of combat, although sometimes that varies. Um, and interesting enough, adventure games are among the earliest video game genres. Uh, everything from Colossal Cave to Zork. Uh, people know about Zork. Um... Hey, look at that. Thanks for catching up, Stream Elements. Here we are. Uh, you folks might know LucasArts for sure. Uh, and Sierra would be the other big player in this. Uh, back in the 1980s through the, about the mid-90s. Uh, and they were the ones uh, putting out some of the best stuff. Um, and uh, I guess, yeah, here we go. This is a fun fact. Marketed as interactive fiction. I can see it. I think it's kind of cool. I like that. Um... Now, something that's uh, I think I read here. Let me see if I can find in this little bit uh, interactive fiction. Let's see. Uh, well, you know what? I read it. I remember it. So basically, what it said was like you know not a lot of not a lot of death other than your own. Um, it was quite common for you to pass away uh, in these in these games uh, to to suddenly and dramatically be unalived, if you will. Uh, and it was always sort of just, uh, you know, luck of the draw if you figured out the puzzle in time, um, or if you knew what to do. So there's a lot of dying, kind of rinse, repeat, in a choose-your-own-adventure style. Uh, and so one of the, uh, things that came out of that was the classic Sierra, uh, uh, concept of save early, save often. Uh, and this is something now I think honestly has manifested in, oh, oh, Hello! Hello, Itzy. How are you today? <laughs> How about that? Arise, ABT face JR Prime and light our darkest hour. Itzy48 gifted a tier one sub to ABT face JR. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Itzy. Was just going over what um, what type of game we'll be doing while we 3D print some stuff. Uh, we are going to be playing uh, Space Quest One, uh, which is one of the original Sierra games. Uh, if you're just catching up with us, if you've already heard that, uh, I'll just uh, kind of back up a little bit here. But um, one of the things that was really cool about these old games is they really did have a story. Uh, there was um, it was a lot of puzzle solving. It was one of those things that um, you know as you as you go on. 
uh, you you sort of start to uncover the narrative and you start to figure out you know some of some of the the, the, the things that uh, need to be solved uh, throughout the course of the game. Uh, now this is the first one, so I haven't um, I haven't played this one. Oddly enough, my actual my, my first Space Quest game was Space Quest Three. Uh, so this is new for me, or at least I, re I don't think I've ever played it. I certainly don't remember it. Um, but it is a point and click adventure. And what that means is, uh, literally you use your mouse to point and to click, uh, in different areas, uh, to, uh, explore or to interact with, um, or sometimes be miserably killed, uh, by the environment, uh, or other, uh, dangers of games. <clears throat> Again, build it as interactive fiction. Uh, they were kind of uh, one of the one of the most dominant genres of gaming between the nineteen eighties and, and and mid nineties. Um, and then you know, sort of the action adventure game sort of started to take place over top of that, uh, where there was more focus on the action element and less focus on the puzzle solving. Uh, any of these early games on Commodore sixty four? Uh, this game was not on the Commodore sixty four. Um, they were on more of the personal computer uh, platform. Um, so, you know, one of the, one of my earliest computers was, uh, was an old Tandy, uh, it was a Radio Shack brand, uh, but it's an IBM clone, uh, and it, that was, that was sort of the, the first taste of that that I got, uh, and I honestly maintained, uh, at least one or two active, uh, Quest games from Sierra or LucasArts, um, and quest type games from this year or LucasArts, uh, really throughout the course of me owning different PCs uh, early on in the 80s and 90s. Uh, Commodore 64, though, definitely laid the way, uh, paved the way for some of these types of games. Um, and that, I mean, kind of the sky, the sky was the limit in those. I mean, really, whatever you wanted to do with a Commodore, you could do it. You wanted to play your own games, you know, Maja games, make your own games. Uh, you can do all of that. Uh, but the processing power was ultimately a little limited uh, for this type of thing. Although I've never actually seen or heard of somebody playing on a Commodore 64. That doesn't mean somebody hasn't tried. Um, and I'm actually kind of curious if that's the case. Has anyone ever played a Sierra game on Commodore 64? Sierra Online Games. Ooh! Let's see. Never published plus comics games in question ran faster. They ran on faster computers. So that's that's where it really um came from. Yeah, so this just had to do with the uh high high res adventures, and I think that was just it was a little much for the Commodore 64s. Um, Space Quest in particular, this is the uh the first. I'll give you a little history on that. Uh, Space Quest was the brainchild of the Sierra programmers Scott Murphy and Mark Crow, who had worked on titles like King's Quest II. Um, but they'd not designed their own game before. They wanted to, to kind of jazz up the overall atmosphere at Sierra Games. Uh, and they just said, why not make something fun and silly? Uh, and so that's what they did. And so they took a space genre... And they took a heaping helping of, of funny. You think Mad uh, Magazine type of funny. Um, you know, we had a lot of parodies of existing content uh, to draw from. And, and that's what you get. You got Space Quest. So that it was sort of, you know, a little Star Trek, a little Star Wars, uh, a little of all kinds of stuff. You'd see different uh, ships from different uh, space movies and, and stuff uh, appearing um, in the backgrounds or sometimes the foreground. Uh, so that was then. Sometimes you'd see things that looked familiar, but they were obviously a, a, a funny twist. Um, fun fact, the original name of the hero in the original release of this game was not known. You were able to create your own name. Uh, but the default name was Roger Wilco, which is uh, a reference to radio communication. It means Roger will comply. Um, but it turned out that that ended up being the de facto name for our protagonist, Roger Wilco, in subsequent iterations. Uh, so that's I think that's kind of fun. Um, I don't want to give away too much about the game itself, as I have not actually played it, uh, so I don't want to get into the synopsis. I'm happy to be, I'm reading a Wikipedia page, uh, just for fun. Um, but, uh, I do want you to know that, uh, it being the first game in the Space Quest series, it did sell in excess of 100,000 copies. Back in 1986, it was a big deal. Total sales around 200,000. So now, obviously, you have games that go into the millions, and that's fine. But back in the day, it was a pretty big deal. It was very popular. And so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, before we get started, though, um, I think it's perfect time for us to... Ooh. 
ask ourselves, what is printing today? Uh, well, as you may have guessed, uh, I am still hard at work on my Pokeball game cartridge holder. That's this piece here. A top and a bottom, but what is a top and a bottom without a middle? Well, let me tell you. We will find out soon enough. As you can see, the middle is hard at work printing on my Flashforge Finder. Uh, I was able to get both halves of the inserts uh, nicely nestled on that 6-inch build plate. I'm still regularly amazed at how well this printer prints right out of the box and how much I can actually get on that tiny build plate. Uh, on the other side, we are printing uh, what looks like a license plate frame, but I assure you it is something far more interesting. Oh, it's pulling up on the corner there. That's all right. I had a little trouble getting the layers down, uh, but it's not going to matter too much. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow, that really did not stick. That's not going to really be a problem for the end result, I don't think. Uh, as it is an outer bezel. Um, it's an outer bezel for a small project that I've been working on. I don't know if I can show it to you without causing irreparable harm, but I will do my absolute best uh, here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Now, I have tried to show this before. Uh, there it is. This little guy right here. This is my DIY stream deck. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a lot of nonsense happening back here. Um some wires and cabling and things well i have decided that i am overdue for having a nice case for it i have just recently upgraded the technology and therefore i think it's time <laughs> uh, having upgraded it from a raspberry pi uh, 2 to a raspberry pi 3b plus um, it does run a little bit faster it's more responsive uh, and I can also now run it in what's called headless mode, so I don't have to boot to an operating system. I can actually just boot right into the program, which should make it a lot faster. So, to celebrate, I'm making myself an outer bezel, uh, and just for super fun and for no other reason, I did some wonky stuff. I made myself a pretty cool retro-y, sci-fi-y bezel uh, just for, just for the purpose of being, uh, cool. <laughs> All right, I'll show you what that looks like without the, uh, there you go. So that's what that's going to look like. That's going to go right over the top of my screen. Uh, and that has some pretty neat greebling. Uh, actually, these are all parts of a ship, uh, that were taken apart and placed around this frame which is basically like a little license plate frame um i will probably have a switch or something like it uh in this spot right here uh and also an led over here i did not leave room for those uh when i first put this on here only because i hadn't thought of it until after i'd already made the model and started printing but that's okay we'll make do we'll make it work all right, so speaking of getting started, I'm going to go ahead and swap over a couple of inputs so that I can kick on my uh, machine here. I am now running uh, all of this off of a... Ooh, maybe. I wonder if it's powered off. Huh? There it goes. Okay, I was a little worried there for a second. Yes, I'm running this all off of a new PC now. Can't hear me and turning this off immediately. Oh, I hope you can hear me. Oh, man, a spicy snack. All right, well, spicy snack redemption is exactly what the doctor ordered. So, oh, I got you. I follow you, man. Well, hey, it's great to see you. Uh, I'm actually just getting everything started up uh, to play. Uh, so sorry that you won't be here for that, but don't worry. We can we can definitely recap uh, about that later. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, we'll start that here in a second. Spicy snack. All right. I got these. I got these the other day. Now, I've never had these. I don't know what they are, but they're blue. 
And how can I pass that up? So we're going to go ahead and give a few of these a whirl. Let's see about opening that up for the first time. Oh, they smell hot. I wonder if these are, I don't know if anybody knows, are these like flaming Hot Cheetos? Mmm. Oh. Oh, that's good. Oh. Mmm. <laughs> Mmm. What's oh, hot? It's really hot. Oh, my tongue's blue too. <laughs> oh, really hot. Oh. Oh, but good. It's got a good balance of flavors. A little, <clears throat> a little lime in there. Oh. Oh, yeah. All right, bring on the heat. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, I was on point. I really like that. Oh, wow. Okay, then. That does not go with coffee, though. Mmm. Okay. All right, here we are. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I would definitely eat more of those. Those are really good. Uh, let's see. If um, if the Carolina Reaper nuts and the Reaper jerky are at a ten, those are a solid seven, maybe eight. Um, yeah, yeah, I like those. I like those. Or eleven, I guess those. Are, whatever, it's um, I forget how my rating system works. I'm not very consistent with it, I guess. But anyway, all right, woo. Yeah, all right, that, that really, that's, I gotta start every stream like that. <laughs> all right, no habaneros for a while, though. All right, without further ado, I think it's time. Let me go ahead. Oh, I have too many mice. Oh, that sounds really funny. I got an extra mouse. I got a two PC thing going on. All right. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll start. Uh, now. And this is how the music is supposed to sound. <clears throat> I'm going to turn it up a little bit. <clears throat> There's Ken Williams. Yes. It looked to me like that comet was flying backwards. Ah, space debris. <laughs> Producer, Stuart Mulder. Oh, it's all lowercase. It's interesting. Game designers, Scott Murphy, Mark Crow, we were just talking about them. Well, this music, I catch myself all the time humming this in the back of my head. Now that looks like a shameless ripoff of Star Trek right up there. Alright, now show of hands, anybody here who's ever, uh, who's ever played a Space Quest game? Um... I have, but this will be a first. Um, you know, I think I, one of the things I really loved, I think, early on was the humor. I didn't expect video games to be funny. Now, maybe I had been exposed to some games that were funny, but I didn't really expect them to be funny. And I think that's the part that really caught me off guard, was how humorous this was. And it was one of my early introductions to satire. 
As we join our story, the crew of the Arcadia is returning home to Xenon after a successful mission developing the Star Generator. Exhilarated by their accomplishments, they are oblivious to the fact that a sinister craft approaches rapidly from behind. I read that fast enough, didn't I? Chunk. Wow, that just looks funny. That is a chicken! That looks like a chicken. Well, not the bug, but the, the other ship looks like a chicken. <laughs> Excuse me. A somewhat spastic research droid blows by in a tiz. <laughs> Perhaps you could provide some relaxation therapy instruction to reduce its level of tension. You're startled by the sound of an alarm breaking through it. The intercom crackles with the frightened voice of a technician shouting that Arcada has been boarded by unknown intruders. The transmission ends abruptly in a sound storm of white noise. Soon overtaken by the cold din of silence. Oh, a thumbs up or a thumbs down? All right, hold on. We'll give you, we'll give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down here. I thought it was pretty good, honestly. But here we go. Here we go. Let's go with a boom. There it is. All right. Soon overtaken by the cold din of silence. Okay. So Distress you sequence is engaged. Fifteen minutes till detonation. You hear the overly chill, cheerful voice of the ship's computer say, "Destruct sequence is engaged. Fifteen minutes till detonation." Oh, and there's a timer. Okay. Um. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna save. Um. <clears throat> oh gosh. Okay. Something bad's happening. We're going to walk up here. Wow. It's shaking everything. Uh, oh, there's a guy over there that's not having a good day. All right, let's try... Go Golly, let's try going over here. All right. Let's see. Red alert, red alert. See if I can see anybody. Oh, they don't look good. I hear footsteps. Oh, shit. Um, a cursory glance indicates that Dave, a lab technician, is dead. Normally, you wouldn't be able to tell, except that his intestines are hanging out of the scorched opening where his abdominal wall was... Oh, crap. Okay. Uh-oh. Yet another crewman's motionless body reduces the shrine of the floor wax. The shine of the floor wax. Hugh doesn't look too neat and clean with his lungs hanging out like that. Ooh. All right, let's see who else is having a problem here. The lifeless body of Randy. One of the lab technicians lies sprawled at your feet. Those laser blasts are nasty. Why? You can't distinguish an exposed or one exposed organ from the other. Let's see what that is. I got something good. Now I can sight in the base of the star generator research pedestal has apparently been trashed and the vandals who stole the generator. Oh. The thing looks like it came off the front end of an old Studebaker or maybe the Batmobile. Anyway, it appears non-functional at this time. It, will probably be, it was probably damaged in the heist. Uh, let's see about touching our friend here. Let's see if it tells me. We got 13 minutes to live. Your search of the body reveals nothing. Your search of the body reveals nothing. Eh, can't do that. Let's check over here. No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. We're gonna... I can cycle between this stuff, or I can actually go up here and do it, too. I might start doing that. That looks a little easier. Ship's probably gonna explode. It's fine. Okay. Here we go. Let's see about our friend here. This is one of the <clears throat> head research scientists, Blanche. You wanted to get to know her a little better. However... Seeing her ruptured chest wall reveals more about her than you were hoping to learn. <laughs> you hear footsteps. Okay, hold on. We're going to walk back. 
A cursory glance indicates that Dave, a lab technician, is dead. Nor oh, yeah, yeah, we didn't finish this one. Normally, you wouldn't be able to tell, except that his intestines are hanging out of the scorched opening where his abdominal wall used to be. You remember that he was forced to serve in the Xenon National Guard, but he wasn't better. All right, well, I'm back here for no other reason other than I can't spend a lot of time over there, apparently. So let's try going back out. And let's go into this elevator real quick. This is okay. Oh, look at those guys. Failing to notice anyone or anything in the room, the Sarian guards decided to check elsewhere. Way to go, Roger! Haha, <laughs> yeah! Feeling good about that. Oh, wait. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna save again. Save too. <laughs> Alright. Oh, this is probably fine, right? This is a Model DX cartridge retrieval unit. Its function is to retrieve and return cartridges from and to an empty storage unit. It's currently empty. Okay. Talk to it. It doesn't respond to human voice commands. It only works through the data archive console. Oh, great. Uh, let's take a look then. The lights have something to do with the data archive unit, though you don't really know what. They do seem to indicate that the unit is still operational. Okay. Uh, we'll go over here then. This is the operation console of the data archive unit. There is a CRT and a chair. So it's retro. Let's see what kind of data retrieval I need. The buttons don't seem to be functioning properly. Oh, here's the copy protection. Hold on, I, I know about this. Okay, good. I don't think my time runs out while I'm sitting up here. Or maybe it does. All right, well, here's what I did. I actually do have the copy protection pulled up. Because I thought this might happen. Um, data cards are filled or received. It's automatically back out. Okay. Astral bodies, binary systems, black holes, constellations, galaxies, gravities, magnetic fields, meteors, moons, orbits, planetary formations, pulsars, quadrants, quasars, solar flares, solar system stars, Van Allen belts, and warp fields. Oh, God. Um, okay, so we're going to try one. And oh, my gosh, it's really. Okay, and let's try this. Ken took that one home. That means we'll never get it back, so don't bother checking back later. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, how about Van Allen belts? Uh, um, oh, my God. It's probably going to explode, and I'm, I'm just going to die. Uh... Ken took that one home. That means we're never getting it back. Okay. I don't know where to start. How about stars? We're going to do stars. Luke. Uh, I have a slight anxiety over how this is about to go. Okay. Uh, stars. I wish I had this pulled up on, on my uh, computer here. I might do that. Um... Cartridge title not found. Ooh, gross. Uh, wait, did I do that wrong? I might have done it wrong, actually. Yeah, I think I did. Um, bloop. Uh, bloop. And a bloop. That cartridge is currently out on loan. Please try again later. Wow, we're gonna have to try a lot of these, huh? Um, yeah, I should have brought that up. That's okay. Um, here, hold on. Uh, let's, let's do something real quick. I'm gonna, just do a quick save. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I used to be able. I used to name these a little bit more appropriately for what I was uh, experiencing. All right, so we're gonna we're actually gonna go ahead and uh, let's see. I'm actually looking, but we know the space. Okay, uh, space quest one. All right, I know what I'm looking for. Uh, this is, that's not great. Um, wow, I found this earlier. Uh, it looks like this might work. Oh, God, can I get, I find a better version of that? Oh, God, all right. Um, all right, uh, let's find images. Uh, that actually didn't help. Wow. Uh, oh, well, I'm hitting the wrong thing. I got too many keyboards. Huh? <laughs> um, let's see about this copy protection. I gotta find it though, cause. Okay, that's better. Uh, I had a copy of it. Is this the one? Yeah, that's the one. All right. Save image as. Okay, this is fine. We'll just put it up here. Open. Oh, well, died. I apparently, yes, ran out of time. So, the explosion was pretty messy. It's a judgment call as to which one critically damaged you first. Was it the concussion or maybe the fragments of ship that were located more closely to the epicenter than yourself and attempted to escape through you? Regardless of what got you first, enough molecular re relocation in bulk and in individual units occurred to forever alter your form and place in the universe. Uh, restore. Uh, you know, I think we're gonna go to this one. Give myself the opportunity to try again. Uh, yeah, okay, so here we go. We got 12 minutes and 15 seconds. Alright, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try... Okay. So... Let's see, we tried solar systems. Have we tried that yet? Oh, I can't. Okay, that's not going to work. I'm going to need that like up on my other screen here. Okay, never mind, folks. We tried. T. I think I'm going to call that a T. T. Oh, all right. Uh, try again. T. This one. Mm-hmm. Sorry, the cartridge reserve. Please check again later. Okay. Uh, solar flares, then. It's probably something that would give me a clue rather than having to brute force this. Cartridge... Uh-oh. I didn't do that right. Uh, mm -mm. That one. That one. I thought I did that one. Sorry, that cartridge is reserved. All right. Quasars, then. Five minutes. Oh, my God. I'm going to die. That's all right, though. Sorry, that cartridge is reserved. Oh, wow. We're going to die again. I'm sorry. Uh, but this is a good learning experience, and hopefully we don't have to try all of these again if I do die. Ken took that one home. Oh my god. All right. Planetary formations. Six 
Oh god, five minutes seems like it went by pretty quick. Well, we gonna die. Oh god, I'm not even gonna... Like, how do I get out? Oh god, we're dead. Oh, and they left too. They get away. How about that? Well, that's rude. Bad news travels fast, especially in the form of a shockwave. <laughs> oh, golly. All right, we're going to restore again. I don't appear to be. I wonder if I can go over here. Okay, I can. Maybe somebody knows something I don't. I hear footsteps. So oh, please go in there. Oh, wow. You've stumbled into a small, dark, and very cluttered utility closet. Many things fall and most of them land on you. It doesn't say much for your cleaning prowess. Failing to notice anyone or anything in the room, the Syrian guards decide to check elsewhere. Way to go, Roger. Okay. We're going to try and go this way. I got a little time. Maybe if I know what I'm supposed to be looking for. I'm not 100% sure I know what I'm supposed to be looking for, though. Hey, Prince Leo, what's going on, man? How are you? Checking out a classic point-and-click adventure game. And I've already died twice. <laughs> Have I? I feel like I've been here. Have I been here? Oh, you hear footsteps. Yeah. All right, go, 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 go. Get in there. Okay, I'm definitely going, to, going in a circle. That's cool, man. It's always nice to be chilling. How have your streams been going? All right. Go up here. Maybe this other guy has a... Oh, no. Go in. Quick, quick. Get in the elevator. Hey, CLG. What's going on, man? How are you? I am having a good time. Yes. Yes, I've never, ever once played this before. And so... It's all the remains of Jerry, one of the few techno dudes aboard who sometimes tolerated your company. Now no clearance excluded you from visiting him during performance of his duties in the elegant lower level airlock of the Arcada. You search Jerry's body and find a keycard. Great. That's a plus. Good, CLG. It's good to see you. Uh-oh. I'm gonna die, aren't I? Oh, no. Cool. They can't see me, so it's all good. Oh, what's over here? This will be fun. Ten minutes till detonation. Wow, we're cutting it close. Alright, let's see what's going on with this fella here. You hear footsteps. Uh-oh. Am I gonna die? This is Stort, one of your crewmates. He appears to be non-functional. You used to know him. You used to kid him about it when he was alive, but now it's true. You frisk the scorched body. Other than carbonized materials, your search reveals nothing, but I hope this isn't becoming a new hobby. <laughs> Where are they coming from? I feel like they gotta be coming from over there, right? What's over here? Oh no, I'm gonna get blasted! Get in there! Woo! That was scary. Oh, I'm in a new place. The monitor gives a readout about the ship's status. Only the lab scientist really knows uh, exactly what's monitored. A pair of viewing ports protrude from the materials testing device. Yeah, this is a remake of the original Space Quest game. Uh, oh, that's crap. 
Uh, what have I got here? What the hell is that? Keycard fits an electronic lock someplace on the Arcada. You have three Buckazoids. It's a genuine widget! You're not sure what it does, but it's heavy. Looks cool. It might be magnetic. Please keep this away from the game disc. Okay. I'm gonna die. Oh, I can get over here. Okay, cool. Uh-oh. Not good, right? Where am I supposed to go exactly here? Oh, I'm dead. The aliens observed their handiwork briefly before looking for others to process in a similar fashion. As you lie on the floor in a smoldering, smoldering carbo-gelatinous heap, you just can't help but wonder why you bothered getting up this morning. Man, I have mornings like that. I do. I don't know about anybody else, but I definitely have mornings like that. <laughs> Alright, CLG, what have you been up to, man? Uh, I haven't seen you in a little bit. Hope you're doing well. Uh, oh, I should have. Gone this way, I guess. Maybe. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to need something first. Oh, I hear footsteps. All right. Well, let's get in the let's get in the elevator now. Hurry up. Man, this is already pretty stressful for you know, having to get in and get out, man. Failing to notice anyone or anything in the room, the Syrian guards decide to check elsewhere. Way to go. I like to think I'm getting to be a pro at avoiding these guys. Ah, I did go the wrong way. That's alright, I've only wasted a handful of minutes on this. I'm supposed to get a key card. Now, I wonder how to... Yes, I understand. Pretty much any time you walk into this space, they're going to be like that. Alright. All right, I've got a key card. Now, I could save here, and I might. Key card. Okay, wait. Oh, crap! Get in there, quick! Failing to notice. Okay, well, they, wow, they missed me entirely, huh? <laughs> Man, CLG, have you ever played, uh, you ever played one of these before? Out of curiosity? These point-and-click games, they're actually pretty fun. Uh, enjoy them quite a bit. Uh, they're basically, uh, what do they call them? Interactive, uh, um, what did I call, what do they call that? I don't know. I mean, interactive stories, though, I think is a good way to call them. Oh, this guy. Yeah, no, we're just going to keep moving. I hear footsteps. Ah, oh, Stuart. Go, 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 Roger, go! Get in there! Oh, my God! Okay, he lived. All right, so we're just going to keep moving. We're going to go over here. The, arch the architects must have been low on oxygen when they came up with the design scheme for this compartment. It's a giant tribute to an ancient but still functional control device. Alright, I'm going to go over here. I hear footsteps. I'm going to die. Ah, crap. Alright, is there a way to do this? I wonder if there's a way to do this where I can 
I mean, that might be futile. That might not be what I'm here to do. I might need to get whatever that uh, data thing is first, but... Gosh, I'm not sure. Alright, keep going, keep going. Oh my gosh. Okay, get in, get in, get in. Good save. Alright. Now, if I hear footsteps and go back... Ah, they got me again. Okay, that can't be the way to do it. Oh, that looks like a computer mouse. Alright, if that's not the way to do it... Come on, get up there. There must be another way. Okay, I don't need to go in there. I've been in that room, but I can go back if I need to. That is definitely something. I mean, I could brute force that. I have all the codes. I could try it. But it might be one of those things where it's triggered by something that happens here first. So I'm going to actually, instead of going... Yeah, I got you. I got you. Going, I'm hearing footsteps. Go this way, buddy. Come on. Keep moving. Keep moving. Here you go, Roger. Okay, that didn't help. Are they over there waiting for me to die? No. Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, so it doesn't take long. So if I'm going to do anything... I should be able to get over there. There we go. I hear footsteps. Go, 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 go. Hide over here, man. One wouldn't attempt to... I <laughs> just... I forgot about something. So I accidentally used a hand on myself. I said, well, you wouldn't try to manipulate yourself in a family-friendly game. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Mistakes were made, but I think... I think we got this. Oh, go, 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 dude. Oh, you can hear the very classic Star Trek-esque sound they've used for the doors there. Hmm, I wonder what I'm supposed to do. Now, I have the key card. Now, I think, instead of having to do this again, I think I'm going to go ahead and save and give myself a couple of opportunities to try and error uh, that specific issue. Okay, so they really, they really make it difficult for me to get down through here. So I'm thinking there's got to be something... I'm going to try this a couple more times, and I'm going to try a different tack. Um, we're going to save... And we're going to call it a new save. And this is going to be... Where is this going to be? Um, below decks. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, designer conduit system runs through here. It carries ventilation ducting as well as different types of wiring. Yeah. Kill detonation. I can't do a thing with that. Might be magnetic. Alright, we're going to try this. Appears to be some sort of wiring harness. You never much cared for electrical. Who knows what this is. Okay. Uh, so... Just on the off chance there's something off this direction. Does not appear to be. Let's keep moving. Keep going, dude. Keep going. Please don't get killed. Ah, they got me. All right. Now, what are we going to do here? All right, below decks. All right, let's come up here. Might be something I need to do quickly. Sorry, it's just an incredible, but not capable of functioning. Oh, hey, Blind Via. How you doing, buddy? No worries, no worries. You wondering what we're printing today? I'll tell you, I'll tell you. So. 
Uh, okay, good. That seems to be paused at you hear footsteps, so that's a good place to be. And we'll show it off. Here's what we got going on, bud. This is what we're printing on uh, my CR10 uh, S Pro V2. Uh, if it looks like a license plate holder, you're close. This is actually an outer bezel um, for uh, my stream deck that I've been working on. I've recently upgraded the technology, so it's time to upgrade the aesthetic. Once this is done, I'll be able to bolt that directly to it using some M3 screws. Uh, and that'll be one less thing uh, to clutter up my desk. Well, it'll still be cluttered, but it'll look it'll look a little better anyway. Uh, and then on the uh, other printer, you'll see here we are uh, taking care of printing the uh, innards for our Pokeball that we printed the other day. You can see here I've got all the other parts for it, uh, including the, um, the button housing, the uh, button itself. Uh, as well as a couple of the pieces that go in to uh, make the button work. So I'm pretty sure I have all the parts once this is done. Uh, so those will be printing. Uh, those will finish up sometime a little later today. Um, and you can see here, uh, that's the part that's why I'm printing that in black PLA, as is the uh, appropriate color scheme for the Pokeball. Thank you, Blind Via. Thank you very much. I think it's very cool, too. Uh, and... It's actually going down really nicely. I'm regularly amazed by how well this printer actually works. Um, and then, of course, you can see here. Uh, you'll notice in the corner of this one, uh, and I think it has to do with this being an older filament and not sticking, or I may actually just need to clean my bed. Uh, but you'll notice in the corner coming up here, it has started to lift off the bed a little bit. Uh, in the end, it's not going to matter because I'm printing from the bottom up, so you will never see that side. Uh, and this is just a prototype phase anyway um so no big deal there printing this in a uh, nice silk filament a silk purple um so pretty uh, overall pretty happy with how that's turning out uh, and you can see that uh infill is the lightning infill available in cura um, which basically uses the minimal amount of uh infill to still keep structure uh, and it's pretty great. I like it. It doesn't have too many flaws that I've seen, um, but you never know. Sometimes these things happen. Uh, and what we're playing today, uh, in case I didn't mention uh, already, or in case you did not know, we are playing the original Space Quest 1. Uh, well, actually, it was called Space Quest back in the day, and then it was remade into Space Quest 1, Roger Wilco in the Saurian Encounter. And currently we are encountering a large number of Saurians. So, I'm going to attempt to hide. Uh, but that's not going to work very well. Oh, interesting. So, they are not there when I go back. All right, I can get around this corner, right? Come on. Go, 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 Roger. Go. Hey, yes. Failing to notice anyone or anything in the room, the Saurian guards decide to check elsewhere. Way to go, Roger. Nice. I knew there was a place to hide. I remember that from playing Full Throttle. Uh, okay, what's this? Bay doors. Ooh, open. This is a remote monitoring panel for some of the ship's systems. Attempts to understand their purpose has always made your brain hurt, but you know that glowing red isn't good, especially since some of the stuff is connected to the reactor cooling system. I see. Uh, always meant to ask one of the technicians what this thing is. However, you procrastinated a bit too long in this case. It's either an ocean in a bottle or a model of your stomach as the deadline draws near. Uh... Okay. I could walk out there. Let's try it. Ah, I have one of those. Blip. You 
slide the key card into the slot. The lock releases with a satisfying click, and the elevator doors slide open. Okay, so far so good. Control panel has many confusing gauges. The only one you can read is says caution launch bay decompressed. There are no controls. It's populated only by gauges and readouts. Uh, wow, with eight minutes to spare, I hope we can do this. The image on the closet door looks familiar, but you can't quite place it. A spacesuit hangs in the closet. A helmet sits on the top shelf. Okay. This button. There's a button above the rectangular object below. You notice some sort of gadget in the drawer. Oh. Uh, inventory? What have I got? Some sort of gadget? Did you expect them to reproduce? Oh, I don't know. Alright. Okay is good. Well... Huh. Oh, I'm gonna get in here, man. Yeah! Wait, can I just leave? Nothing much will happen without power. Uh-oh. Uh... You don't need that right now. What is it? Deep Space Survival. Oh, is this the thing up here? Seatbelt. The option works better with the power on. That option works better with the power on. Oh. As you slide the throttle forward, you can feel the Arcadia start to shake. Ooh, are we going to make it? Huh. This is a radar used by the Autonav system. Dials galore. Populate the instrument console of the pod cabin. Nice lights, huh? Corona. Ooh. That's fun and pretty and not alarming in the least. Okay. Oh, crash. Maybe I should have pushed the other button. Thank you for flying Arcadia Arcadia Getaway Pod Lines. It's nearly been a pleasure serving you. Tell a friend if you've got one. The button doesn't work the same since the accident. Okay. It's been rendered inoperable due to the shock of the less than graceful landing. Well, I suppose we can get out. Huh. It's a good thing I'm in a spacesuit, though. Hey, let's see what this is. I wish you would tell me what I got. I should have looked. It's a highly reflective piece of broken cockpit glass. Okay. Well, I turned on the switch. That's nice. What did I pick up? I really need to start looking. Ah, it's a survival kit from earlier. Very nice. 
Very nice. Okay. Yeah, we saw that a minute ago. Survival kit. Great. Upon opening the survival kit, you discover a Xenon Army knife and a canister of dehydrated water. Serious? It's a Xenon Army knife. What are you expecting to do? Repeat? No, I kind of... The can label says Pelvatron dehydrated water H2. All you do is add air. Makes 10 gallons. Caution, do not attempt to open or rupture container. Misuse could result in personal injury and or flash flooding. Do not attempt to open or rupture container. Yeah, okay. Well... All right, here we go. A survival kit. Okay. Well, let's... You know what? We haven't saved in a bit, so let's go ahead and we're going to save. And we're just going to keep making plenty of saves. Escape. Spelled just like escape. Okay, here we go. Oh, God, I'm going to die. Oh, he's a giant worm about to eat my ass. Uh, wow. Can I get up there? Hmm. I can't get up there. I'm going to be eaten by a worm. I can tell. Oh, no. Okay. All right. This is good. I'm starting to... Th I'm st oh, hello. What is that? That looks interesting. Although hard to tell from where you're standing, it may be a sign. If you look closer, you could read it. How do I get up on there, though? The bones, the waterly dehydrate, it's still about too much mass for the puny likes of you to displace. You know, jerks. It's fine. I feel like I'm going to need, like, some... Yeah, I think I'm going to need some music. What's in there? A section of vertebrae near where the head used to be attached extends north and south. To the east is an ominous-looking skull. Must have been previously attached to the rest of the mammoth bones, partially disassembled here. So we're gonna can't do that, huh? Out of the corner of your eye, you spot an object hurtling from the greenish atmosphere toward the parched surface you currently occupy. Wow. Oh, that looks awful. Rats! If the eyes don't deceive, that's a Sarian spider droid. They must have detected the escape pod leaving Arcata. Spider droid must have been sent along to settle any unfinished business. After the jarring impact, small panels open through which legs sprout. You recall reading in an old issue of Space Piston magazine that this droid was designed to seek out organic life forms and self-destruct when close proximity to the target has been achieved. Okay. Oh my god, I got eaten! <laughs> Whoa, those big guys pack a powerful appetite. Did you feel the way that thing just chomped right through your skeletal system? That had to hurt. The grill burps in solitary satisfaction. It doesn't often get nice warm meals like you. Great. Alright, so that's a grill. And that's going to eat my ass. Let's see about going down this way. Oh, where are you? Oddly enough, a plant grows in isolated spots in this inhospitable environment. Shall I pick a plant? You snag a small cl cluster of leaves from the gooey plant. The stuff sticks worse than Fortnite old undergarments. It's a good thing your gloves are Tefloid coated. Okay. 
Uh, save. Save it as Tefloid. Let's see about this. Do I need more? You already have your allocation of adhesive herbs. Okay. Come on now. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking the same. Is the grill going to eat me? Huh. Okay. Like, I'm feeling like I need to walk on these bones, you know? Like, it looks like a path. So, I'm going to go back this way. Maybe I'll just go over this way. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot an object hurtling from the greenish atmosphere toward the parched surface you currently occupy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Rats! If the eyes don't deceive... Okay, we, we, already, we already covered that. Ah, we're gonna explode. Yeah, we're gonna explode. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. Oh, it's gonna eat us. Yeah, we're gonna die. 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 Get down there. Get down. Go, 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 go. Go. Okay, this is what I thought we had to do. Alright, now the good news is we shouldn't be able to be eaten by grills. Yeah, Teflon undergarments don't sound good. Ah. Uh. That stinks. Let's see, I hear that thing. Huh. I'm gonna die, right? Yeah, okay. I'd say the widening of those cracks is an excellent indication that the thing is not a trusty, stable, truly stable unit. And you don't you hate the way it makes all your brain it makes your brain bounce around like a handball in that space or cranial space. <laughs> I probably should have not knocked that over. Now that I know what it does. Here, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do a quick restore. Alright, now that we know that, alright, we're gonna come down here. Maybe this is why I don't hesitate to use restore points in other games. I think this conditioned me that that is A, both okay, and B, necessary. Uh, for the completion of certain games. I'm thinking about turning maybe on my Spotify just for a little extra bit of a jam here. Keep going, buddy. Alright. Moving on. Moving on. Alright, now we're going to save. New save. Bones. All right, well, let's see. I walk over here. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot an object hurtling from the greenish atmosphere toward the parched surface you currently occupy. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Wait, maybe I could kill it. Come 
Come on, no! Oh, that's disappointing. All right. Well, we'll... All right, let's just move on. Oh, crap, you bastard! Son of a bitch. All right. All right, got some timing here. All right, it's going to be back. So, let's... Ambush. All right, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. We're going to see. We're going to see it come back. Let's see, let's see. Come on, come on, come on. I got this. It's gonna come back. Yeah! You bastard. Woo! It was not known that you are a master of the protrusion toss. That was a fine effort. Ha <laughs> All right, now we're going to save this as boat. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, we read that. All right. No problem. We're safe here. We're safe. Ah, yes. Lick. Just what I meant to do. All right, walking along, doing stuff. Uh, what's over here? I want to see. This is the north central boundary of a massive skeletal structure surrounded by Terra Nazo Firma. Hmm. And here we get to the sign. Oh, you dummy. Hey, what's the deal here? That elevator doesn't lower. It sucks. <laughs> Slime has also been broken loose previously and set back in place. The being responsible, most likely your Caronian counterpart, tried to fool everyone else by using some sticky gunk to hold it together. Like that would fool anyone. Let's see if this works. Coronian is interesting. You flex those incredible muscles you wish you had, but you're barely able to snap loose the previously fractured stalactite tip. All right. I did fall for the the classic hole in the bones. Whoa, bitches! It's a great monster. I'll bet he's lonely and just wants to be your friend. Uh, what can I use? Maybe this. You really don't feel like sharing your precious dehydrated water with Snake Face here. Hmm. What's that? It's bucks. Uh, there's a key card. Uh, switch off. No, we want to switch it on. Yeah, so dehydrated water, right? So this thing actually... Yeah. So the can label says, Pelvitron dehydrated water is H2. All you do is add air. And it makes 10 gallons. Caution, do not attempt to open or rupture the container in misuse... Could result in personal injury and or flash flooding. Ah, switch it on. Is 
The disgusting, slimy, slimy, slurping, slithering sounds from the grate would not be improved by running them through the translator gadget. Ah, well, now we know what it is, though. It's a translator. That's cool. Let me turn that off real quick. All right. You might be able to cut off one head, but meanwhile, the others will be turning you into fresh ground turkey. All right. And we can try that. The monster is much less interested in the widget than stripping the flesh from your bones. All right. Ooh. All right. And let's see here. We're going to save that real quick. Call that sticky. Because I'm sure even though I have stuck its paws over. Oh, yep. Okay. Nope, that's good. I feel deoxygenated water would be more accurate. Yeah, I think you might be right. Uh, well, I have a mechanism for opening it. Huh. Wait a minute. Watch this. Ha! Why did I know that would work? I have no idea. That was pretty cool, though. Oh, that's acid. That's a lot of it, too. All right, uh, you gaze intently at the greenish pool of liquid, the first real sign of moisture on this planet. The pool seems to have no bottom, and the gentle dripping has a soothing effect on your frazzled nerves. A small plume of mist rises as each drop hits the pool's surface. Well, you know we gotta touch it, so... And we're dead. <laughs> Let's run that one again with the band-aid of our new How He Blew It cam and chalkboard. I have to say that carefully, Mark, every time we mention something with a trademark or copyright, the lawyers come out to food. Instant replay! Now this is where Roger makes the fatal move. <laughs> and we can see the result of that mistake. Oh, this is funny. I don't know about you, Scott. Personally, I like to know exactly what I'm messing with before I actually mess with it. I guess he'd better... I guess he'll know better next time. Ouch. Wow. Oh my god. Sure, you've died a few deaths before, but this one really burns you. Planets are depending on you. Seeing you seeing you do stuff like this is definitely making them nervous. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, where's the lie though, right? Alright, we did have to do it though. Alright, so let's see. Is there anything else we could have done with that? Um Maybe not. We know what not to do with it though. Oh, what are we gonna put our lips on? Nah, nah. Let's do. Let's not do that. Okay. You know what? What if I smell it? You lean over the pool to get a good solid whiff, and whoa! Talk about clean sinuses. Oh my god. That's right. You have no head. That darn pool must be filled with acid. You obviously can't go on living that way. <laughs> well, now we're going to do it. We're going to lick it. You ready? We're going to lick. You lean over to drink through the tempting pool of liquid. As your lips touch the fluid, you feel a pain, which could be likened to kissing a lit rocket nozzle. Now you know what they mean when they say don't drink the water. All right. Well, there we go. Oh, I've melted. I've melted. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Well, now we know. Uh, 
Now that stuff up there is acid too, so we're gonna have to get really clever on how to get through that. What? The beams seem to form some sort of electronic barrier across the path. Ooh. I bet something reflective would be useful for that. You have quite cleverly turned the beam upon itself, frying and fusing it into a state of inoperability. Hey, you know what? That's pretty good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop, stop. All right, that doesn't have anything good. All right, let's just go. Let's go. Okay. Now we're going to come over here. I'm wondering if there is something I've missed. Because I feel like... Yeah, that's clearly acid. Okay. This is an upper pathway in a slightly smaller chamber of the underground complex. Near the middle section of the path, acid drops have formed a pattern of little holes. No, it's not a dot-to-dot -dot puzzle. Okay, so we're going to save. We'll actually call it dot-to-dot. -dot. All right, now we're going to try and walk through here, okay? What? <laughs> oh. All right, so Oh my god, all right. I was worried about this the whole time. can't really see a pattern to it either, you know? Oh my god, again. Oh my god. What am I supposed to do? Alright, let's see if I've got any gadgets. Uh Okay, I can't use that. Okay. Better save that for when you're thirsty. Huh. Oh, okay. Huh. Ah, I did it again. see and make a heck of a great rust remover rhythmic pattern that stimulates your alpha levels and make a heck of a great rust remover too oh okay
careful now. Hey! All right. Wow, we made it through. That was a little scary. Good thing that thing's still stuck. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh. As soon as you enter the room, you find yourself surrounded by darkness. Suddenly you become aware of the fact that you cannot move or speak. A strange, unknown force has taken over. A massive holographic image appears before you. Yo! That's that dude from the Thundercats, right? Panthro? He begins to speak. So, Jojo, Blavu. Ciao, Rippy, a cordial, we see a leaf of a square stock. Worry, no mustard, a proud of a roof to cook. Rippy, rip, your opio to coat him in your black man of no smoke. As an apparent result of your inability to understand the alien tongue, the being has sent you back to the surface. You need some kind of help with that. Oh! Hey, I got a fix for that. Careful now. Ah, oh, crap. It's alright. Oh my god, it should have moved! What the hell? <laughs> Come on, I didn't get that so flawlessly last time! Go, 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 dude! Oh my god, okay. Yeah, so apparently the translator works best when it's switched on, uh, and I don't know what I expected. Okay. Uh, save. Translate this. And we'll go over here. Hopefully we understand what it means this time. Aha! All right, now let's see what he says. begins to speak. So you found your way to my hallowed chamber. Fortunately, there is much more to you than meets the eye. I have been monitoring your travels on our planet. It appears you are up to the up the proverbial estuary without a means of locomotion. <laughs> In other words, you're on the Leather Express slapping the dogs, pounding the sand. You kill for a fine ride. You are obviously in need of transportation. Yes. Let us see if you are worthy of our assistance. Cool. On the surface lives a beast called Orat. He proves to be a bit of an annoyance on occasion. Dispose of him and bring back evidence of your conquest. Only then will I deal with your plight. Good luck, strange one. Bring to me evidence of the beast or rat's demise, and we'll talk. With that, you find yourself transported back to the surface. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Or rat. All right, let's see here. Uh, we're gonna take a, a quick, a quick break. Okay. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break, and I shall be right back. Um, so please uh, bear with me. Oh, you know what? Um, last time I did this, it broke. So if it breaks again, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'll be back, obviously. So bear with me just a minute. Uh, I shall return. Uh, and, you know, yeah, that's that's all I got. All right.
All right, we're back. We're back. Everything's good. Yeah, so I was really, I was having trouble with these, and I couldn't figure out what the problem was, and it turns out the batteries were dying. <laughs> so go figure. Anyway, we're back. We're going to go do a little more Roger Wilco here. Roger Wilco. All right. I've got to find a dude named Orat. Hi, kitty. Yeah, come on up. Come on. No, no, kitty boy. No, not like that. Not like that. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on, dude. Come on. Come on. Oh, okay. Or just don't. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, my gosh. Cat. Serious. Come on. Bro. Gotta find a guy named Orat in the desert. Ow. Ow. Get off me, dude. Okay. I'm gonna get eaten by whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess we're doing that. Chomp. I knew it. Alright, I think we're gonna go to the left of our pod now. Sir! You need to behave yourself. Sir. Oh my gosh. What a mess. Come on, guy. What are you doing to me here? Aside from causing all, uh, problems. Alright. No problem. But at least I know that robot thing isn't after me now, so there's that. Ah, I'm dead again. Alright. Alright, come down here. And we're actually gonna go ahead. And we're gonna we're gonna turn up uh, Spotify here in a second. I wonder if just standing here is dangerous. Oh, you know, no, I know the one we need. A nice slug of water would sure hit the spot right about now. Mmm, that dehydrated water really hit the spot. Should keep you going a little longer. Did I go too far? I think I went too far. Oh, it's not what I was trying to do. All right, let's go left this time, shall we? There's my ship. Is there anything in the ship I need? No, let's go this way. I don't feel safe. What if we go this way? There's a creature in the desert called Orat. That's what I need to know. Your sense of ridiculous keeps you from walking off the edge and falling to certain death on the treacherous rocks below. Oh! Okay. Now, I'm going to walk out this way. Let's see if I die. <clears throat> yeah, I got a feeling if I walk out here, I'm going to die. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's go back here. Oh, rat. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 
Eh, can't really adjust the volume of the game. Hello, sir. Were you planning to come up here now? Come on, kitty. Oh, kitty, no. No, sir, come on. Come on, you're, you're problems. You are problems. Oh, hey, guy. Alright, it's huge and ugly. Of course, your opinion may differ depending on what part of the universe you come from. You also get the impression that he might be quite mean. They're normally known for his intellectually stimulating conversation in the monster and beast community. Alright seems limited to grunts in the way of response to your probing questions. No, sir! A cat trying to figure out how to interact with me. Oh god, I'm gonna die, right? Okay. Oh, I, I've been made a ball. <laughs> Alright, it's transformed you into a new piece of recreational equipment. Along with finding this treatment extremely rude, you don't survive it. <laughs> it's tough to make friends around here. Relax, stretch out, restore. Let's get back to it. There's adventuring to be done. Alright, well the good news is... It's pretty close by. All right, so it lives in here. Now, what do we have? We've got bucks. We've got a translator. We've got something reflective. We've got some kind of magnet thing. And we have a knife. Not much to work with, but we're going to see. What are you doing, man? Come on, walk down here. Let's go. Let's go. All right, now... That thing? The knife can barely cut through a rancid grell lard, much less the thick hide of an O-Rat. Alright, well, it was worth a try. Uh. Uh, okay. No, don't touch me! It's too late for that. You best jam! Oh, no. Dead. Ah, oh, man. Alright, O-Rat. Let's see. Now, there might be something I haven't collected yet. Which might... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, well, it left no parts behind, right? Alright. Well, we're going to try one more time. We'll see if we can use what we've got. And then if that doesn't work, we'll... Um... Hey, get down here, dude. Come on, Roger. Why? Wow, that's frustrating. Okay. Oh. No! Oh, God, it hates me already. <laughs> I probably should have saved before I went in. Son of a bitch. Okay. I don't feel like it's nice. I could be wrong. <clears throat> oh, kitty. Alright, well, it's fine. The kitty's doing kitty stuff. Alright. Well, let's go right here. Come on. Come on, Roger. Yeah, mind you, I'm using a mouse for this. I have... Uh, alright. Okay. Now, if I can get in behind over here. Okay, I'm hiding. That's nice. The widget does not appear edible to the big smelly monster. On the other hand, you do. <sighs> do I need food? Throwing your survival kit does not seem the best strategy for your survival. Okay. No, oh, can't use that. 
All right, well, it hasn't seen me at the very least, so there's that. Um... Orat, always in the mood for a snack, snatches the can out of the air with its spacious oral cavity, chews and swallows it. He notices a rumbling deep within his abdomen. I was hoping this would happen. Oh! Yeah, use it sparingly. Be careful because it'll blow its ass up. Well, we blew it up! <laughs> you reach down and take the Orat part in your hand. Some of it oozes to fill the space between your fingers. Ew. We're also out of water, so I hope we don't die in the desert. All right, so now before we do anything, a lot of stuff explodes, I've noticed in this. Um, so so or at defeated. All right, here we go. <clears throat> we're walking and we're walking. I'm curious if this bone's going to hold up much longer. If I can walk past it again or if I'm going to die. So we're going to find out. I think we'll be all right. Yeah, there's probably, no doubt about it, there's going to be an accident of one kind or another on this shaky piece of calcium-rich matter. Alright, this is no problem. I think we've done so much, so far, I think we've done alright. I wonder how long this game actually is, though. Because, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's... Seeming like it's coming together pretty easily. And I don't know if it's just I've played enough games in my lifetime that this isn't, uh, isn't, hasn't been the most challenging thing, but looks interesting. Although hard to tell from where you're standing, it may be a sign. If you got closer, maybe you could read it. Ah, crap. Here we go again. So we have to walk through all this nonsense again? Yeah, I bet you're truly getting to hate this elevator. It seems like it, yes. Alright, well we can get past this. This is no problem. Great monster. <laughs> Keep rolling. I should be able to avoid all of that next time. I think we're still going to save when we get up here. Go, go, go. Go, go. We'll go, Rangers. My Power Rangers, I'll tell you what. I feel like I, I arrived too late for Power Rangers. I feel like I was too old uh, to appreciate it. I thought some of it was kind of cool, but... You know, I I knew Voltron. Voltron was my jam. Save, melt, redux. Ooh, you ducks. All right, it's fine. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So what was always fun about these games is, you know, the unpredictability of I can try and do everything just right and still end up melting myself in the process and you know in some of these games really is trial and error i'm still not convinced that you know maybe maybe this version of the game doesn't really require me to use the copy protection uh i can't recall um or maybe i was i think there has to have been something i was supposed to do again the massive holographic image appears before you so you've returned yeah proof of the destruction of all rat if so drop it beside me yeah well i do this 
You drop the Orat part to the ground. The vision is silent as the dainty morsel splits to the dry soil. You're startled by a rumbling, and suddenly an oddly shaped door comes into view and slowly opens. You hear a voice, a voice different this time, beckoning you to step forward. Okay. Here we go. Oh, we got some Wizard of Oz chick going on, don't we? I'll bet that's true. When you step through, the door slides closed with a faint hissing sound, and you are alone in a large room with a full, full of strange equipment. Hello! Please don't be alarmed. We intend no harm. We are a peaceful race. We are cautious, however. Others don't share our way of life. Welcome to Corona. You are standing in the power generator facility of our underground settlement. All power here is produced by steam. That is unimportant to you, however. We have promised you transportation. It is a skimmer. It hovers approximately one half meter above the traveling surface. This is very important because of Grell. Grell and his like dwell in caves below the sand. If you stand on the surface too long, you chance becoming a rare moist meal for him. The skimmer is programmed to take you to a settlement on the other side of Corona called Vlens Flats. Ulens, maybe? Ulens Flats. You can make further travel arrangements there. I'm sorry, this is all we can offer. I hope your trip is a safe one. Board the skimmer when you're ready to depart. Good luck, strange one. Okay, so it's super important that this is some steam shit. I don't know why I know that. Nothing visible on it, but that doesn't mean I can't... You might need to insert a data cartridge for this thing to work. Oh, no way! No way! Was I really supposed to get a data cartridge from earlier? Hey, man. I gotta wonder, right? Oh, no. Let me make sure I haven't soft locked myself here real quick, guys. Alright, um. Wow. Hold on, let me see. Oh, I'm typing. Ah, the wrong keyboard. Data cartridge. If any time the game tells you to, if it can be sure to hightail it on the screen. Um, head through the door to the left, shift data cartridge now. Head to the left again to find the horse. Mm -hmm. Ah. Crap! Well, shit, peeps. Looks like we're going back. Uh, how do I know that? Because I knew we needed that damn cartridge. Apparently, we can actually leave this place without it, and then we are screwed. There's the save early and save often. Although, technically, this is about, like, having to restart. Oh, my God. All right. I'll walk in here. And I just need to look around, I guess. 
These panel lights are here just for decoration. Don't actually have anything to do with the data archive unit. The data cartridges are stored in these secure storage modules. These things hanging from the ceiling look like blowfish on a rope. They're actually lighting fixtures for operating the console. I'm supposed to hang out here. Minutes till detonation. It's a model DX cartridge retrieval unit. Its function is to retrieve and return cartridges from and to the storage unit. I'm supposed to hang out in here, right? Alright, I'm just gonna hang out. Apparently I was supposed to stand in here. I do have the key card. Okay, now. After a few seconds... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. Um... I think maybe I messed up. Ah! The door opens. A man you recognize as one of the head lab scientists stumbles into the room. He appears to be in serious need of some abdo seal abdomen filler. Oh, yeah, all right. You got eight minutes. I don't think I'm going to make it. After only a few steps, he hits the floor with a disconcerting thud. Oh, he's bleeding out. Oh, uh, let's go talk to the guy. His lips move. The star generator's in danger! The Arcana is under attack! You'd better get off this scow! If you value your life, we'll go! Just before his system sees all functions short of decay, he looks over toward the shelves full of cartridges and utters, Astral bodies! With one last gasp, his lifeless form slumps to the floor. Oh my god, astral bodies is what we were trying to do this whole time. Okay. But you don't know until he says it. I knew it was going to be like that. You bastards. All right. Astral bodies it is. Uh, so, first things first. We got to quickly do it, okay? Because uh, we're almost out of time. So, bleep. Uh, bloop. Bleep. And I want to say bloop. I mean, that's the one. Ken took... No! Ken took that one home! What? Astral bodies. That's what I punched, right? Uh-oh. I think we're screwed now. Punch. Wait a minute. Okay. And then this one. Right? This one. And then this one, and then, oh wait a minute, did I fuck that up before? And then this one. Cartridge found, now retrieving, okay. Oh my god, we got five minutes. We have to do this again. Okay, wow, we gotta get out of here, yo. I was going to need that later. Oh, what a mess. Five minutes. Yeah, I understand. Five, my God, five minutes remaining. I think I could do it, though. Failing to notice anything in the room. Sorry, yeah, I got you. Okay, no problem, no problem. We can get out of this joint. Man, I knew there was something I was missing. And that's what I was saying, the copy protection there. If you don't know what that code is, you're screwed. And that's how they get you. With old games like this, they basically made it so that unless you were also copying the, the key card or whatever the, whatever the thing was, you'd never be able to share this game with someone else. It's actually pretty smart. I mean, now with the internet, forget it. I mean, that's what I did. I looked it up on the internet, but... You know, also part of that is I, you know... 
I'm not good at keeping. Far, Phew. Failing to notice anyone or anything in the room, yeah, the Sarians. Okay, okay, whatever, I got you. All right. Let's go. Let's get out of here, Roger Wilco. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to need to use a key card. It's probably fine. You slide the key card into the slot. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Go in, you dork. I forgot. Oh, man. I got three minutes. I might be able to do it. All right, now I can go through here. I might make it just the same. I want to find out what that middle button does, too, before we get going, if I have... Oh, no, I actually have to use it again? Okay. No problem. Phew! Okay, no problem, guys. No problem. Three, we can do this. Kill detonation. All right, we're gonna get this gadget. All right, let's go. Oh man, I can't believe I'm gonna do this again. Honestly, the worst part is probably gonna be knocking that block onto that, uh... oh, what's this thing? Some alien anchor being is broadcasting a message about the stolen star generator. Uh, can we get in? Okay, that was weird. All right, we'll put that on. Much works better with the power on. Two minutes till detonation. Oh, okay, well then let's just go. As you slide the throttle forward, you feel the arcade show. Okay, here we go. We made it. Can't believe we had to go all the way back, though. That's some garbage. But this should be, I mean, I remember all the, all the puzzles, so we should be okay, I think. Let's see what that does. You have a feeling you shouldn't have pushed that button. Oh, no! I did make a small mistake. Ouch! I think we've got some serious organ damage here. All of them, of course. You could be easily replaced in the time period which you've just arrived. However, a quick scenery check reveals that you are now in the Dark Ages. The only transplant you'll get here is from Carcass to Spit over a Flame. Uh, as you draw a few final lungfuls of oxygen through your newly acquired sucking chest wound, you gleefully notice your final resting place is near beautiful Nottingham Castle, universally renowned for its inclusion in Sierra's Conquests of the Longbow. Oh my goodness, you're shocked to hear some highly inflammatory language making its way toward your, into your auditory canals. Must be some uncivilized ruffians in the nearby pub. Well, you're dead again. We even warned you not to push that button. You have no one to blame but yourself for having to sit through a plug for another fine Sierra product. Oh, that's funny. Maybe you'll follow directions next time, and thanks for playing, and all that stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> I fucked up again! <laughs> oh, my God, no! We have to do it again. Why? No, wait, no, I actually need to go up here. Oh, crap! Okay, no, it's fine. I think this is where I need to go. I can't believe I did that to myself. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wow. All right, here we go. We're going to go in here. We're going to go out there. And we're going to come back through. All right, maybe we'll give ourselves a little more time, too. Although, obviously, it was plenty.
Let's see if we get over here. Ah, there we go. The door opens. Yes, okay, we know this guy. Wow. After only a few steps, he hits the floor. All right, good. We'll talk to his ass now. I wonder if he says something different. Wouldn't that be interesting? His lips move. Astral bodies. Okay, good. Now we're going to go here. All right, so we're going to control this. Astral bodies is this one. Bleep. Bloop. Uh, bleep. And then one final bloop. Cartridge found. Now retrieving. Okay, this is good. This is very good. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, thanks for that. Quick save. Good deal. All right, now we're going to walk our way out of here. Yeah, this way. All right. So now, this is pretty much par for the course. Now, I don't know if anyone's ever... Okay, here we go. Safe. All right. I don't know if anyone else here has ever played one of these games. Um, certainly, fans of Retro might be aware of it. Um, but this is pretty well par for the course. Like, it, I'm really sad that I made the comment earlier about this was this was pretty easy. Because having to go all the way back here because I missed something, not great. Not great. It's it's frustrating, honestly. I mean, it's not bad. It's not like I don't know what to do, but it's a it's a lesson in. If it looks like you should be able to do something with it, you probably should. Like, I was definitely genuinely concerned that I hadn't gotten what I was supposed to get there. And, of course, you know, not knowing what I was supposed to do. And that was, you know, knowing that there was a guy coming out of there. I mean, it was just sheer luck that I went the wrong way and didn't go through that door to start with. I went to the right instead of the left when I came out of that closet. Which is, which is basically how I ended up not... Um, how I ended up not getting that little dialogue with uh, with that guy. And because I didn't go through the door and come back through, well, that was... Ah, uh, wait a minute, though. Ah, damn. This isn't so bad, though. All right, and we're going to go ahead and use the key card. So yeah, so games like this could be infuriating because you you have to go back through and you have to do all this stuff again. And But it's okay. I notice a gadget. Open the door. Yep. Grab it. Okay. Perfect. Oh, this music is funny. It sounds like elevator music, um, which is an odd thing to have in a, a mildly suspenseful situation. I should probably, instead of pushing buttons, I should look at them first. Uh, I will bet that that probably had some. This is the power button. This is the auto nav button. When operative, it allows the pod to navigate to the closest habitable planet. This button is not to be pushed at any time. Okay. Ah, the seatbelt was probably a good idea. Power bud, got it. All right, here we go. As you slide the throttle forward, you can feel the arcade is start to shake. Okay, see now, look, we're doing it. We got this. We made it through this time. We got the part we didn't get before. Wow. Wow, that was really crappy. Ooh. Uh, 
All right, that's the nearest habitable planet. So we're going there now. Da 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 na 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 na. That's good. The music sounds good. It's not alarming at all, which sometimes it can be. Now let's see. Is it switching between cameras up in the screen? I didn't even look. It's fine. Ah, oh, thank you for flying Arcata Gateway Getaway Pod Lines. It's been near. It's nearly been our pleasure serving you. Tell a friend if you've got one. Okay. Well, first things first. We don't need to push that button, so we're going to get out of here. Oh, yeah, and good. It is It is good. Okay. Now, let's see what this is here. Great. I'll have that. Thank you. And we'll take this also. Thank you. All right. And we're going to save this one as escape. Yep, that's fine. And we'll go this way. Oh, yeah, there's the grill. Okay. Hey, come on in. Let's go down this way. All right, now we know what to do. We're going to grab some of this. Get it. All right, yeah, that was silly of us to, to run into that situation, but here we are. All right, now let's see here. And, oh, very good. All right, cool. The stuff sticks worse than Fortnite old undergarments, gross. All right, here we go. We're getting there, though. <clears throat> we'll get to the front. Yeah, that growl's not going to get me this time. Let me tell you what. All right. Now, I know there's going to be one of those uh, zoomy guys that comes to get me, right? So we're going to go up here. This is going to be just fine. We're going to take care of things. Yeah? Okay. All right, now we're going to save... Uh, ...on the bones. Okay, and we're going to stand right here. And we're going to wait. And the reason we're waiting is if we... Oh, uh, out of the corner of your eye, you spot... There it is. A spot an object hurtling from the greenish atmosphere toward the parched surface you currently occupy. Smash. Now, this little guy we saw this earlier, he's going to walk off the screen. He's going to come back. Uh, but let's see. Rats, if the eyes don't deceive, that's a Sarian... Sarian? Spider droid. They must have detected the escape pod leaving the Arcada. The spider droid must have been sent along to settle any unfinished business. After the jarring impact, small panels open through which legs sprout. You recall reading in an old issue of Space Piston magazine that this droid was designed to seek out organic life forms and self-destruct when close proximity to the target has been achieved. All right. So here we go. So we're going to we're going to try timing this. This thing's going to come back. I'm going to push on this and hopefully squash it. Come on, come on, come on. Probably making sure I have enough time to save. Push! Yeah! Ha <laughs> ha! Squash! Take that! Foul beastie. That's right. It was not known that you are a master of the protrusion toss. That was a fine effort. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Well, 
There we go. I'd say the widening of those cracks is an excellent indication that this thing is not a truly stable unit. And don't you hate the way it makes your brain bounce around like a handball in all that spare cranial space? <laughs> Taking pot shots at Roger, man. Come on. Roger's my boy. He does, he does the best he can, okay? It's not his fault he keeps getting stuck in situations like this. And besides, so far... You know, I'm going to say he's been pretty clever getting himself here. Well, we're sitting at the uh, 2 hour and 15 minute mark. If you're just getting here, I want you to know I have actually already been here and done this once already. Yep, there it goes. Down the hole. Only to find out after quite a bit of uh, exploring... <laughs> I didn't get something early on, and there was no way to go back and get it. So I had to restore. That's the, that's the deal with these games. Hey, what's the deal here? The elevator doesn't lower. It sucks. All right. And we know this is a stalactite that can be broken off. Thanks. You flex the incredible muscles, which you had, but you're barely able to snap loose the previously fractured stalagmite. Okay. Well, to be fair, it was on some pretty sticky stuff. <clears throat> All right, and we're going to walk nearby here, and this thing's going to stick out its... Yep. Fortunately, we've got the goo. It has the goo. Nice. Now you're stuck, aren't you? All right, now we can get past what we're doing here. And we're going to take this, because we remember that from earlier. We're going to stick that in here, which opens the door. Very good. We are not going to bathe in the acid pool. We learned our lesson there multiple ways. One does not simply taste or otherwise uh, smell or interact with facially or manually with that uh, pool of acid. It's not a good idea. It's not a good idea at all. Now, these games really are something. I, I, I honestly, you know, the the action isn't really, uh, let's see, you quite cleverly turned the beam upon itself, frying and fusing it into a state of inoperability. You know, the action in this game isn't, isn't very high. Um, you know, in fact, obviously walking is, is um, not as exciting as running even, but, you know, the reality is, okay, wait, stop, Roger. We're going to save. And the reason we're going to save is because... Uh, melt. Uh, not redux. This is actually going to be our three ducks. <laughs> uh, this is now be the third time that we have come through here. Do not get, do not get melted, out, Roger. Okay. Great job, buddy. You did well. All right. Yep. Yep, we did really well. Oh, God, did I turn on the thing? Is it on? Oh, I hope it's on. I forgot. Ah, crap! No. That's a translator, by the way, in case you're wondering. Okay, now, yeah, translate this, this is fine. You can see where I've screwed myself a couple of times already. I have similar restore points from my earlier playthrough. Uh, we will get to this point. We will get through here. Um, it might not be, and, you know, I don't know. Let's see, as soon as you enter the room, you find a massive holographic image appears before you. So I did read that earlier. Um, it begins to speak. So you found your way to my hallowed chamber. Fortunately, there is much more to you than meets the eye. I have been monitoring your travels on our planet. It appears you are up the proverbial estuary without a means of locomotion. In other words, you're on the Leather Express, slapping the dogs, pounding the sand. You'd kill for a fine ride. You are obviously in need of transportation. Yeah. 
Let us see if you are worthy of our assistance. Okay. On the surface lives a beast called Orat. He proves to be a bit of an annoyance on occasion. Dispose of him and bring back evidence of your conquest. Only then will I deal with your plight. Good luck, strange one. Yes, we've been here before. Bring to me the evidence of the beast Orat's demise and we'll talk. With that, you find yourself transported back to the surface. Blip. Here we are. All right. Now we're going to save under Orat. Uh-huh. And then we're going to take a walk. And we're going to walk again. And here in a little bit, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, take a look at our print and see how that's going. Blip. Meow. And wait, wait. All right, we're gonna save again just in case this doesn't go as planned. All right, we know that the Orat's in here because we found it in here earlier. Okay, now. What did you expect it to? Oh yeah, you know, we haven't. I'm far too busy for that now, oh crap. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Where are you going? Yo, my man. My man, get out of there. Holy shit. Okay. All right. So there we go. So we definitely made a couple of mistakes. Nothing too tragic. We can go back in. All right. Now, this is what we need. This stuff right here, this stuff is good. This is, this is, um, okay. Let me see what this is. This is, uh, Pelvitron dehydrated water. All you do is add air. It makes 10 gallons. Caution. Do not attempt to open or rupture container. Misuse could result in personal injury and or flash flooding. So, knowing what we know about that, we're going to be using this against our pal Orat here, who looks very hungry. Or perhaps thirsty. Here you go, buddy. Oh. Orat, always in the mood for a snack, snatches the can out of the air with his spacious oral cavity, chews and swallows it. He notices a rumbling deep within his abdomen. Oh my god, that was like me with the fucking habanero the other day. Oh my god. And that was about me with the habanero too, so... <laughs> Alright, well we'll collect this finger, find our way back, reach down, take the Orat part. Some of it oozes to fill the space between your fingers. Gross. Gross. <sighs> okay, we come back down here. We gotta walk up the bones again. We gotta go through this whole sh 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 nonsense, but it's there for a reason. It's a test. It's a test of Roger's fortitude and his ability to overcome challenges. Not once, but twice, perhaps even more than that. The important thing is we killed that droid. We found our way through. We've killed the Orat. I did try to reason with it earlier, just so you know. I didn't just resort to murder. But since I've gone through this once already, I, I knew that the solution was, um, <clears throat> was in fact murder. So, yeah. What can you do? No, or rat aside, if you will. <laughs> I don't know. It might have been the last of its kind. He might, it might have been... Like, that might have been it. So, I'm going to feel maybe a little bit bad about that. In fact, that's probably the kind of shit that will come back to haunt me later. Be like, oh, you killed the Orat? Oh, probably shouldn't have done that, dude. Like, thanks for telling me. I really appreciate all that. Goop. Yo. I'm getting to truly hate this elevator. I figure after so many tries, too, you're going to break those bones and die, too. So, you know, another one of those save early, save often kind of things. Like, I'll probably die here, so let's save and sticky. It doesn't appear to have any sort of extra appendages, though, so that's good. Yeah, that's actually looking pretty good over there. It'll be done sometime soon. All right, moving on, moving on. Everything's done here. For those who don't know, yes, that bath of acid 
is lethal and is acid. <clears throat> All right. And just because we're going to save, uh, where is it? Melt three ducks. Melt four ducks. Okay, we made it through. Yay. No death for me. We should be good. We're just going to save one more time in case I've forgotten something. And we should be just about where we left off moments ago. After having to um, restart almost essentially. Again, the massive holographic image appears before you. So you've returned. Do you have proof of the destruction of Orat? If so, drop it before me. Yeah, you got it, man. You drop the Orat part to the ground. The vision is silent as the dainty morsel splats on the dry soil. You are startled by a rumbling. Suddenly, an oddly shaped door comes into view and slowly opens. You hear a voice, different this time, beckoning you to step forward. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, sure. Listen to the voices. Oh, Roger. Here we go, buddy. When you step through, the door slides closed with a faint hissing sound. You are alone in a large room full of strange equipment. Please don't be alarmed. We intend no harm. We are a peaceful race. We are cautious, however. Others don't share our way of life. Welcome to Corona. You are standing in the power generation facility of our underground settlement. All power here is produced by steam. That is unimportant to you, however. We have promised you transportation. It is a skimmer. It hovers approximately one half meter above the traveling surface. This is very important because of Grell. Grell and his like dwell in caves below the sand. If you stand on the surface too long, you chance becoming a rare moist meal for him. The skimmer is programmed to take you to a settlement on the other side of Corona called Eulens Flats. You can make further travel arrangements there. I'm sorry, this is all we can offer. I hope your trip is a safe one. Board the skimmer when you're ready to depart. Good luck, strange one. Okay, so here's where we're going to save. Uh, oh, it doesn't look like we actually saved here. That's interesting. You save. Good luck, strange one. Okay. Yeah, let's see what this is. There's nothing visible on the computer screen. You might need to insert a data cartridge for this to work. So this is what this is what kicked my ass earlier. I was a there was an exploding ship on which I could have grabbed a data cartridge earlier, and wouldn't you know it, my dumb ass left it behind and got to this point. And I was like, ah shit, loading. Whoever shall read this, my name is Doctor Slash Ball. I am a scientist with the Star Generator Project aboard the Star Lab Arcadia. We've just successfully completed development and testing of the Star Generator. During this time, I've come to believe that our progress has been monitored by others. I fear that the Sarians may have learned of our mission. If my fears prove true, the Star Generator and the people of our universe are in serious jeopardy. Star Generator is a miraculous device used as intended. It will help preserve life for eons to come. Used as a device for evil, it would cause the destruction of millions of lives and enslave all who oppose the Sarians. Encoded within this cartridge are all the plans and specifications for the construction of the Star Generator. Should any disaster befall the Star Generator project, scientists would be able to create a duplicate of the Star Generator with this information. Please guard it with your life and return it to the Xenon ruling body as quickly as possible. Important note, the Star Generator is capable of self-destruction. This was introduced to the system as a precaution. To activate it, one must enter the code 7464. Taking a picture of that real quick because I know that's going to come up. Yeah, there's your copy protection. Multiple layers. A five-minute time will begin to count down. Beware! Anyone within the kilometer, five kilometers of the star generator will be in danger once the timer has been initiated. Please be careful and good luck. Man, I'm glad I did that. Hey, let's talk to this guy. Ah, let's lick him. 
You want to lick him? Yeah, okay, let's do that. Come on, dude. Come on back. Yep. Licking the cylinder seems like a waste of time and tongue power. Come on back, friend. Also, he said something about this being powered by steam, and I got to feel like he says it's not important, but I feel like it's got to be important. Come on, man. Lick. He's got a wrench and knows how to use it. Okay. Hey, guy. People of Corona sure are an odd-looking lot. You can't pin it down, but you're sure there's something different about them. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, let's do the thing. Let's get in this ship here. I'd say we're about ready. This section is an arcade sequence. Would you like to play or skip? Oh, golly. I guess we can play. I don't know. All right. Oh, I'm supposed to use the, okay. Oh, 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 ow. Ow, this is not good. Oh, shit. Well, I'm dead. And I'm food. And, oh, God. I've done the thing. All right, here. This is okay. I should have saved right after doing that. I wonder if it's going to be the same code. All right, it is 7464. Good luck. Okay. Save. All right, we're going to try this one more time. Another good luck, strange one. All right, let's get flying. And we got to we got to consider wrapping this up. Uh, I know it's only been a couple hours, two and a half hours, but I got a little bit of a late start, unfortunately. Ah, oops, had the darn thing in reverse. I hope nobody saw that. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, sure. Let's play the arcade. Ah. Ow. 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 Ah, crap. I'm going to lose. I'm going to get there. I see it. I can make it. Oh my god, I'm going to die. Ah, crap. I don't remember that the first time I did it, but that's all right. Let's see if I can... Oh, crap. Okay. Okay. It's totally easier with the control... Ow! Oh, shit! Oh, my God. Okay, it's... I was starting to say it's totally easier with the mouse. <laughs> All right, here we go. Come on, we're going to do the thing. Nobody saw that. It's fine. It's fine, Roger. Let's go. Don't hit the tall ones. Got it. Ah, crap! I hit the right mouse button and it actually did mm. All right, we got this. Oh, he didn't crash at that time. Are right, we going to save as... Okay, arcade. 
Yeah, we're gonna play. Okay. Wow. It's pretty intense. Wow, okay, okay, ow! You bastard. Oh no! Ah. Uh. Okay, that's rude. Ah, man, what is going on here? Why can't we just... Oh, my God. I see the town, at least. You bastard again. <sighs> All right. Well, I'm going to have to. Gosh, I'm really going to have to find my way out of this here in a minute. We might just have to stop for the day here. Ah, crap! Alright, guys. We're gonna have to be done here for now. Okay, well, there was that. Alright. Hey, folks. I appreciate you sticking around with me. I didn't realize that would actually just shut down the whole thing. <laughs> but I appreciate you sticking around with me, hanging out for a little bit. Uh, we gotta wrap it up for today. Uh, not any particular reason, just... Uh, well, yeah, I got, I got other things I gotta do. So, uh, But I'll be back tomorrow morning. Uh, for more of this, which has been a lot of fun, uh, I think. And it's been a while since I played a, uh, a point-and-click game. Um, certainly never have shared the joy with uh, somebody else before, so that's super cool. Uh, let's take a real quick look at how things are going. We can see the, uh, the Beazle here is well underway. Uh, it is, just in case you're curious how far we are into it, uh, it's an 11-hour print, and we are... 44% done. Um, so, you know, I did start this earlier in the day. Um, but that'll be really nice. That'll be a nice little addition for my stream deck uh, to have that on it. There's a bracket that's going to go with it, too, that'll hold the computer um, and help it stand up. Uh, I will print that probably later. In the meantime, here's what we've got with our um, uh, Pokeball inserts. Uh, this is, of course, going to be for holding Switch game cartridges uh, and will be inserts for this here, which will, I believe, be like spring-loaded or something. I'm not 100% sure uh, how that works, um, but it'll be fine. Uh, with all that said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look, everyone, um, at who we might be able to raid. Uh, so I encourage you um, to consider... Uh, sticking around with me just long enough uh, while we go ahead and get our raid on here. And we're going to just do a quick little copy-paste here, a little copy-pasta. 
Um, if you are not a sub, please use this. If you are, in fact, a sub, please use this. Um, and join us. We are going to go ahead and we're going to find our pal. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're going to find our pal Denim Blonde. Yep, and we're going to go we're going to go ahead and raid uh them. So, uh let's try this uh real quick. I don't actually remember how to do this. Um There we go. Give me a minute on this. There we are. There we are. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Quick actions. All right. Yes, we are going to Raid Denim Blonde, who is a very cool, chill streamer. She is currently playing Resident Evil. My guess, probably something to do with Halloween. She is definitely a spooky person, and we do like that about her. Um, so, we do like that about our pal Denim Blonde. Uh, so, stay with me. We're going to go ahead and do a little raidy raid. Um,. And be sure we say hi to Denim Blonde. Thank you all. Thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much.